Hello everyone, I am Ashley Naborchuk. I am the Maryland State Firemen's Association Miss Fire Prevention first runner up for 2023-2024. And I'll be introducing our next speaker who will be speaking to us about the idea to implement implementation community programs for life safety. Our speaker is Ryan Whittington. He is a firefighter paramedic, community and department engagement officer for the Ocean City Fire Department. Ryan Whittington is a firefighter paramedic and a certified hazardous device technician accredited by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Currently, he excels in his role as the community and department engagement officer in the office of the Ocean City Fire Chief. His responsibilities include overseeing the department's therapy dog program and administering the fire camp, initiatives that showcase his innovative approach to community engagement. A member of the National Information Officers Association, Ryan is committed to effective communication and public education in emergency services. He has a notable history of service as a deputy fire marshal for Ocean City, where he managed the department's quality assurance and fire prevention programs for eight years. Ryan has been featured on CNN with Anderson Cooper. His dedication to community service is further highlighted by his appointment to Ocean City's Mayor's Diversity Work Group, through which he focuses on addressing the needs of recruitment and retention in fire safety for at-risk populations. Ryan's career reflects his unwavering dedication to public safety and community well-being. Everyone, please welcome Ryan Whittington. Thank you very much for that introduction. I appreciate that. As you mentioned, my name is Ryan Whittington. Can everyone hear me? Is this close enough? Everyone's good? All right. Um, as the community department engagement officer, I'm tasked with being engaged with the community. And it started with a lot of ideas that I had, and I would always find that you have an idea, but working for government or a volunteer organization, there's red tapes. Do you have the support? Are we gonna be able to get it done? How much does it cost? That's always the question. What's it cost? What's the amount of overtime? How can we staff it with volunteers? We've all faced that in this room, and I found that using more of a collaborative team approach, uh, I'm able to implement a lot of ideas that I have. Some, my command staff is like, do we really need to do that? And I'm like, we're gonna try it. Uh, but a lot of what I do is not possible without a team effort, as I mentioned. And today with me, I have Christy Bowden, our administrative coordinator in the fire department. Uh, she is basically the chief's boss. Uh, so in order for us to get anything done, she oversees that. And some of you were asking earlier about data. And a lot of things and programs that you see that I run, Christy handles the data, the costs. It's in an Excel spreadsheet. She tells me when I'm over budget, which is all the time, and versus under budget. So um, that's why I'm, Christy's here for any other questions that you might have as we go on. And then also, uh, my partner I get to go to work with every day is Therapy Dog Max that you see in the picture. He's also here with us, and we will show you how we use him for our community engagement. So your department, what are some programs that your departments um, do at, in your jurisdictions? Community days? Okay, is that like an open house? Okay. Fire prevention stuff. Any other type of uh, community engagement opportunities you guys do? Evacuation drills and uh, senior living. Okay, evacuation drills, senior living. Okay, kids' birthday parties. I actually, I like that idea. Um, a lot of families want to bring their, the, you know, a firehouse birthday party is really where it's at. Um, we have some kids who want to do it year three, four, five, six, seven, um, and that's when we try to move into our fire camps. But birthday parties are actually an excellent idea for the celebration, but for the education. Trunk or treats for Halloween, whether it's competitions. Okay, trunk or treats, very good. So. Is there anything that you guys want to do? Um, and the lady here that just talked about the fire camps, we're going to talk about ours in a little bit, very briefly. Uh, but kids staying the night in the firehouse, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's brave there. That's very brave. We send ours home after about six hours. Um, so any ideas that you have, uh, our goal today is to help you implement them. So within the Ocean City Fire Department, we have several key components that we do for our community engagement. 
Number one, change your clock, check your battery. All right. One of the things that we're changing that narrative to of check your battery, not replace your battery, is we hope more folks are in the 10 year lithium ion. So that is something that we do, and we're going to get into that program in a little bit. Uh, fire camps, very briefly, I cover that because you already had a presentation on fire camps. Uh, our therapy dog program, not only do we use that for the mental health and wellness of our members, but for community engagement and education. Uh, he's a much better teacher than I am, and we'll talk about what some of the things that he does. Typical fire prevention, during the month of October, we're at the elementary schools, but we have other at-risk populations. So we're starting to go to our senior centers and places like that, um, senior day areas where they come together to play games. We come to them to talk about slip, trip, falls, um, how to carry their cell phone with them all the time instead of leaving it. They make these nice little straps that they can wear. Um, so we obviously engage in fire prevention. Our public safety expo last year was going to be year two. It was rained out. We're planning to bring it back. That idea came from Trooper Four's 45th anniversary, I believe it was, and we wanted to highlight them. So every year since the first year we've done it, we call them the headlining event. So they get flight time approved for the event. We bring them in. And the first year we thought we'd have a couple hundred. Um, and I was sitting at the hangar in Salisbury waiting to fly in. They're like, there's thousands of people here to see this helicopter. But we couldn't fly out because of weather. So then the weather lifted like an hour late. So we came in late, but everyone loved it and we were still there. So we're going to talk about how to partner up with your public safety um, organizations to plan something like this. And then CPR and AED, the very foundation of saving lives uh, within our community. So today, things we will discuss, different events. How do you market your events? If your department does little things for marketing, you can have very successful programs. We'll talk about our therapy dog program. We will talk about what we do within our schools and how we're changing our fire prevention approach and how we also handle our smoke alarm check program. The final thing we'll talk about is planning your event. How many of you have planned an event, community, open house, and you invite the media and they don't show up? Okay. It's very frustrating. You put this work into it. You want to highlight it. You want people who, who could not attend the event to show up. Well, we're going to show you now how you can take control of your message and put it out to the media and it actually be on the six o'clock news without them showing up at your firehouse. We've been very, very successful with that. Um, our fire camp highlights, we organize ours through our parks and recs department. They handle all the insurance. They handle all the, uh, it's $130 to come to camp. Uh, they handle the registration fees. So if you are a volunteer fire company and your county has a parks and recreation or the county puts on camps, talk with them about partnering where they handle the registration and getting the money, collecting the money for you. That way you don't have to worry about billing and all those things. And they sign the insurance waivers for the county and you don't have to take care of any of that. You can focus on running your fire camp. Uh, we do run ours jointly, boys and girls from the age of 7 to 14 years old. They do not sleep there. We are ready to ship them away after a few hours. As a matter of fact, the first year we did it, oh, we should do an all day camp next year, Monday through Thursday. About day three, we said, we're going back to half days. <laughs> and that's what we do now. Um, so we also um, help them with a little chemistry for the older children. Uh, each of them gets this chemistry kit where they're able to learn about how things burn, uh, the dangers of fire, and as you can tell, these kids are, are high schoolers that come into a different camp. And we want them to really, we want to grab their attention at that point. Um, so we do much more elevated things with um, our high schoolers. This is our kids. We take them for our senior camp. Once you've attended our normal camp two years in a row, we will take 15 of you in our, our department vans and we drive you to our uh, mutual aid partner. So we take you to Trooper 4. We take you to the Coast Guard station. Uh, we take them to uh, the sheriff's office, all to get a grasp on our public safety partners. They got to go out on the DNR boat uh, offshore in Ocean City. So we partner with all of these agencies to say, hey, on Monday, we want to come see Trooper 4. Can we do that? Absolutely. Tuesday, we're going to the Coast Guard station. Wednesday, we're going to go to Beach Patrol and have them teach them semaphores, which I've been around it and I still don't know anything they're talking about, but some of these kids pick it up uh, pretty quickly. Um, we invite Maryland State Police. We have a law enforcement day. 
our sheriff's office, our fire marshals, bomb squad, they get a full glimpse. So here they're running traffic. You would be surprised how many people like almost come to a screeching halt with these little kids wearing these light blue shirts. Uh, but the kids absolutely love it. And annually, the state police, our sheriff's office, natural resource police, they reach out to us asking, are you still doing your, your camp? We want to be a part of it. So on Monday, they are going to learn the very basics. They're going to go over the trucks, the ambulances, touching the tools. Then on Tuesday, they start experiencing thermal imaging cameras and doing uh, hide and seek little activities and games. And then they learn about other public safety organizations that make the world go round. And it's been uh, hugely successful. And they, uh, year one, we started out with 40 kids in camp. I think I increased it to 60. Uh, just because we had so many on a wait list, and I don't like kids on a wait list. Um, now, our program, we're seeing repeat kids. They take every camp. We now have day camps. Uh, and some of our kids, it's year four now, and they have been in every camp. So if we have two week-long camps, they've been in every camp for four years in a row. Um, and we've had one of the, our um, campers actually join our cadet program. So we have seen huge success in our fire camp. When it comes to fire EMS and planning an event, this is where your marketing and your thought process goes in to make your events very successful. So clever naming, you wanna capture the public's interest. We don't call it an open house anymore. We will still have open houses, but we call them the Public Safety Expo. Uh, we also plan different events. So for example, uh, we're gonna talk about some events here in a second actually. But any of the events that we plan, we send direct invites to our elementary schools. But what I learned is never send out 700 invitations if you don't want 700 kids. So what we do now is we select what grades we want to attend our events. So if there are 200 third graders at the school, they may get to go to funnel cakes with firefighters, okay? Then when we do popcorn with paramedics during EMS week, Fisher's, Fisher's popcorn. <laughs> when we do um, uh, popcorn with paramedics, we might invite fourth grade. So we're very strategic because they will all show up for free popcorn, free ice cream cones, and free funnel cakes. And then we uh, invite all of our town employees. So if you are part of a volunteer fire company, invite um, the county government, invite the city government, send an email to all of those employees, invite your commissioners, your council persons. Uh, and then obviously your general invites to social media and your general press releases that you send out. So one event that we hosted was Funnel Cake with Firefighters. And the reason we came up with that name is we wanted to capture their attention. Everyone loves a, a funnel cake on the boardwalk. And so we said, let's bring people to us on the boardwalk there are already people there, so they're gonna stop. So think about leaving the firehouse and where you can go in your community to host different events. You can go to where the people are. You can go to a mall, you can go anywhere, take a fire truck, set things up. If you don't have a popcorn stand that's easily accessible, are there things that you can do and have folks donate the popcorn and you take it and still call it popcorn with paramedics? Um, there are some more bullet points there uh, that kind of talk about once they come to you, you can provide your strategic message, what the purpose of that was. Obviously here he's talking to the kids about getting outside the house and having a meeting place. This is our marketing, how we uh, send out the advertisements to the kids. Um, this was in June, so kids weren't in school. Again, so we went to the boardwalk. This was our social media post. We invited them all to come out uh, to the Golden Plate. Um, at the restaurant or business where we occupy for the two to three hours that we are, we always set up the smoke detectors, different displays uh, that you see that the state has, a lot of those bike safety helmets. We set all of those things up at these events um, so that we can reach as many folks as we can. These are some different names that I've come up with. You know, they had coffee with cops. All right, that's boring. Let's, let's ramp it up a little bit. And let's have some more competition. So we did cones with the chief. We went to Dairy Queen. Uh, we had a cone competition on who could make the curl on the cone the best between the chief and I. Uh, but what he didn't know is that before I even started in the fire service, I worked at Dairy Queen for 10 years. 
So I absolutely smoked him, and my curl was the best. Um, we haven't done pizza with paramedics yet. Um, last EMS week, last year's EMS week, we did popcorn with paramedics. This year, we're going to try to change it uh, with pizza with paramedics. And then uh, French fries with fire marshals. Our fire marshals felt left out. Um, so they didn't want funnel cake, so we're going to do French fries with fire marshals. Uh, the, that event probably won't be as well attended because they're going to think it's some code enforcement lesson. Um, so it probably won't be well attended, but we'll, we'll try to make them feel good. So this is how we did our implementation. There's typically four steps to anything that I decide to implement, and this is just a quick summary for you on how we go about that. Uh, partner with your local businesses. Have them donate the item so that it does not cost you money in your budget. That is the best thing I can tell you. When I go to the chief and say, we're doing popcorn with paramedics, uh, is that coming out of your uh, fire prevention budget? No, it's free, chief. And that's what he likes to hear. And the way that we do that is we take a draft flyer to their location and say, we'd like to partner with you. Is this something that we could put out? We're going to send it out to 200 kids. Uh, that's going to be parents, families. The only thing that we're off asking is that you offer them a small theater kind of little dish, little boat, those little boats of popcorn. Sure, absolutely. If they want anything else, they can buy it from you, which they always typically end up buying, so they find it's beneficial for their business as well. Um, include logo, proposed dates and times. When I go to meet with them and say, this is what I would like to do, um, Chrissy usually has dates, times, she has the big calendar, because I don't have that forethought of, oh yeah, on that day we have fire camp, and I actually can't be there, and I scheduled it. Uh, so Chrissy maintains the master calendar that I say, hey, we want to do popcorn with paramedics. These are some dates. These are some ideas. I put that on there because I don't want to, well, email me, see if it works. These are the two dates. Which one works for you while you're there? Um, and you can get the ball rolling to get it planned. Um, prepare the number of required personnel. Are you having someone who's on duty? Is it going to cost overtime? We send a lot of our on-duty um, uh, crews, our engine and medic unit. If it's also on a weekend, we make sure that we invite our volunteer partners, or if they want to, if some of them are around during the day, they will also bring a piece of apparatus. Advertise. Again, that's how we send out those invitations. And again, it can be overwhelming. Um, what, I forget what event we had. The chief was like, why did you just put that out today on social media? Like we should have had it out a week ago and we had hundreds of people show up to popcorn with paramedics. That's why, Chief. We don't actually want to be overwhelmed um, because our events are typically well attended. Our therapy dog program. Um, this was an idea. Uh, our fire chief, Richie Bowers, uh, from Fairfax, Montgomery, he talked about some different things that they've done uh, within their agency, and this idea popped into his head. We started talking about it. We looked for dogs. We couldn't find one. Uh, and then we found an agency through the state fire marshal's office who said, you should call Hero Dogs. Um, you want to take his leash off? And Hero Dogs called and they introduced us to Therapy Dog Max. Max, at ease, here. Um, so Max comes in. I'll bring him up this way so you guys hopefully can see him. Um, Max, turn. Max, take a bow. Good boy. Good boy. All right. Go ahead and sit. Good boy. Max, down. Uh, they found us Therapy Dog Max. And Max came to us when he was about 24 months old and already had a lot of skills. He was trained as a service dog, and he actually didn't make the cut, which that's a good thing because now he's here with us uh, working at the firehouse. Uh, so Max has about 26 different skills. He's trained to sense different types of stressors in individuals, um, raising your voice, getting loud. Um, he senses that trigger. Uh, we sit in command staff meetings, and Christy will tell you, we have maybe one or two chiefs that think that what they say matters. <laughs> they beat their fist on a desk or elevate their voice. Up pops Max's head between their legs at the desk. Everyone starts laughing. The room breaks down. And the chiefs are like, OK, I should probably calm down. Um, I mean, it happens quite often. Um, so Max is trained to learn those sensors and individuals. Um, he's been a huge asset for us, not just for the morale, for the mental health and wellness of our firefighters, our paramedics, our fire marshals, our EMS clinicians, our dispatchers, but for the community in general. 
And when I really realized that this would be beneficial is when we had a cardiac arrest at an elementary school. And all the kids were in there. We got done. I took the wife to the hospital. And um, it was during American Education Week. And we, I come back to the school, and they said, um, do, you, do you mind trying to talk to the kids? And I walk in the room, and the kids know me from all the fire prevention activities we do. And they all just looked at me. No one was talking, not like they normally would. And there was nothing there to break the ice. Well, Max goes to the school probably once a month. He's at some school, if not twice a month, within our school district. Um, we had a fatal crash uh, in Delmar School District where one of their high schoolers died. Not in our state, it's in Delaware. They called us saying, we've heard from other schools about Max, can he come to our school and visit? Uh, Max was the most popular therapist that they had come in to visit the kids. Um, so he's been good for our members from the mental health and aspects out of it. People don't even ask, when I walk in with Max, it's, hey Max, it takes like three minutes for them to say hi to me. Um, and he knows that attention, he knows where everyone is in the firehouse, he will walk to them uh, he's not on a leash in the living quarters area, uh, the admin area. Um, he knows how to look for people, um, especially if they have crumbs under their desk. Um, but Max is also used for our fire prevention, right? So when we think, think about fire prevention, kids want to learn about it. But when I can talk to them and say, uh, if you all listen to me, uh, Max will show you stop, drop, and roll. And they're like, what's the quiz question? And then they all get it right and they're listening. And then if you guys all go home school-wide, when we talk about our partnerships, we have a coloring contest for the elementary schools. Draw a picture of Max at your meeting place. We had 300 some photos, pictures that kids drew that came in. And we have to rate them first place, second place, third place. I always tell the kids that Miss Christie is the one who decided who wins. <laughs> So when they see her, they're not very happy because you know, three, 200 of them didn't win. Um, so they draw pictures of Max at their meeting place. They write Max messages. Um, and we found that they're super engaged with having Max as part of their fire prevention education. Um, so working with Hero Dogs and as his primary handler, he does have a second handler who's also a firefighter who has two kids. The reason we did that is he, I actually let Max go with him uh, once to twice a week and he spends time with, uh, Ian is his name, with Ian, his wife, and their kids. And that keeps Max engaged with children. Um, he, if you follow him on Instagram, he's wearing tutus all the time. Uh, next, he might be wearing these tiaras you all have on your heads. Um, so Max is very um, affectionate with kids. When they walk over to him, he automatically rolls over. Uh, but again, we use him to demonstrate stop, drop, and roll and different things within the school. Um, this was our introductory video. I think I'm just going to click on it to make sure it plays. Um, it's just a quick one minute introduction that we did to give our introduction of Max to our community. Oh, and welcome to Ocean City Fire Department. We're thrilled to introduce to you K9 Max, a special 20 month old black lab with a very important job. Max underwent 18 months of specialized training with Hero Dogs, a nonprofit organization that trains service dogs for America's heroes and first responders. This dedicated training has prepared Max to take on our therapy slash facility dog role in our community. Max will use his skills to help first responders, town employees, and everyone in the Ocean City community. He's ready to lend a paw, a friendly nuzzle, and a calming presence to those who need it. Therapy dogs like Max have proven to have a positive impact on mental health and well-being. We're proud to have Max on our team and know that he'll bring comfort and support to everyone he meets. Here's what others are saying about Max. Max is such a calming presence to have around the firehouse. Today, you need to become aware of Max here. Today, I'm going to show you how to become aware of Max here. Because I feel like Max is very kind. When Max isn't at work, he's home being a dog and enjoys a farm life with his best bud, Samson, the Golden Doodle. So next time you see Max around town, be sure to give him a warm welcome. Together, we're making Ocean City a better and happier place. So that's how we introduce Max to our community. Uh, again, it's been very, very successful. Uh, What's his name on Instagram? Uh, his Instagram name is Hero Dogs, D-O-G-S, 
max, M-A-X. Just a couple more photos. Um, and before we're done, if I have a few minutes, I will have Max do some of his skills. Max, place. Max, place. All the way. Go place. There we go. So steps for implementation. A therapy dog program is no joke. Um, just coming here to you today, I knew you were going to meet Max. And I thought, okay, I'm going to give him a bath. So I gave him a bath last night. Um, this morning, I wake up at 4 a.m. and it's pouring raining outside. And I'm like, well, now he's going to smell like a wet dog. And all of you are going to be like, oh, Ocean City has a wet dog smelling therapy dog. Uh, so that stress level, and you have to have someone who's going to make sure that those things are taken care of. His teeth are brushed every night, his paws are trimmed, and his ears are, are cleaned um, nightly. So the maintenance of a therapy dog is no joke. So it has to be someone who's willing to take the dog in. We do not let him live at the firehouse. Firefighters do not clean toilets the same. They don't cook the same. They do nothing the same. So imagine being a dog, and you have someone who spoils you, and then some guys are like, Max! Go on out to the bathroom, come back in when you're done. Like, there's, you, you gotta have a routine for the dog. We found that, um, you know, Max isn't allowed on sofas, anything like that. Well, Max has some friends in the firehouse where I walk in, because he can go with anyone within the firehouse. Um, I can leave him, go to a meeting, come back, and the firefighters have him doing things like trying to hunt ducks now. And, like, it's it just, but again, at the firehouse, seeing that when they come back from calls and they're, you know, they buy him fake ducks and they toss them, um, you know, to him to try to get him to hunt. But um, they are bonding with Max, and that's one of the biggest things. So for steps for implementation, talk it over with the command staff, talk it over with your members. On the way here, Chris and I were talking. We had a battalion chief who did not really believe in the therapy dog program. He's like, just another thing we're doing, don't need a dog. You know, we're firefighters. And after we had Max, I'd probably say six months, this uh, individual ended up in the hospital. And we took Max to see him. And Chrissy was just telling me some of the positive things the chief said about how it mattered to him when he was away from no one. Max came in to visit him. Uh, we have some um, Max swag, poker chips, baseball cards and things that we give out that have fire safety messages on them. We have uh, his fit photo on a card, so a greeting card. So if our firefighters are sick, injured, we can send a card um, to them from Max. Uh, but that chief said having him come in and now the nurses wanting to know more about his career, what he did, uh, was beneficial and he appreciated it. So um, make sure that you talk it over with your, your folks. Again, everyone's not going to support it, believe in it. But if you have a core group of individuals who will support the program, that's a way that you can definitely get it off the ground. Um, find a reputable company to obtain your dog from. I will read that one more time. Find a reputable company to obtain your dog from. Uh, Hero Dogs, which is out of Montgomery County, they typically only provide therapy facility or service dogs for first responders or veterans in the metro capital region. So we were very fortunate with our partnership with the state FM's office to have some contacts at Hero Dogs who then said, we can make it work to get you a dog down in Ocean City. You don't just get the dog. It was about six months to nine month process by the time we meet him. You know, and I'm one, like if I go to the car dealership to buy a, dog, or to buy a, a car, <laughs> I'm coming home with the car that night, right? Like I don't want to order it. I don't want to wait for it. Uh, and unfortunately with Max, you got to meet him. He came to us. How do the sirens do? The loud trucks in the apparatus bay. They do this full evaluation of the dog to make sure it's the right fit. And then they take him away and he goes back. And then you come visit him and then they, you gotta leave again. So it's not just a, here's a dog for you. It's very, very big to make sure that the dog is a fit for you. Um, prepare a budget. Our, our um, proposed this, our city manager said, I really like this idea. And he said, I want it to be for the entire town. And I'm like, wow, that was an easy approval process. And then he said, but it can have zero fiscal impact on the budget. Okay. Uh, so I said, no problem. We're going to hold a press conference. We had a press conference. We had a red carpet. We had all the dignitaries lined up, uh, all the firefighters, and then out walks Max. 
And I said, um, we're very thankful for this opportunity. I said, unfortunately, uh, Max cannot have any fiscal impact on the budget. And the city manager's sitting there and he's like. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, so what we're asking is for our, our community to step up and help fund Max so that we can keep him. Uh, and then, of course, I would tell people, like, hey, if we don't get the money, we're going to have to take him to the pound. Uh, and people in our community donated, and Max has a fund that has been astronomical people giving. And we're talking people might give $10 here. They might give $20 here. Some of our other businesses give $1,000. Uh, he got a $10,000 donation when we first got him uh, to get the program up and running to pay for his vet bills, his food, all of those type of things. So that was the route that we went. Um, again, yes? So just to let you know, in the state of Maryland, because I wrote the bill and got it passed, mm -hmm. um, there is a retirement for Max. So because he is a therapy dog for the fire service, when he retires, all of his vet bills is paid for by the state of Maryland. So remember that. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. Max, that's for you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's good to know that. Um, and so our fund, um, we also had to work with our risk management. And we also had to work with, because they're like, well, what if your dog bites someone? And I'm like, well, what if the police dog bites someone, right? Yeah. He's less likely, they're more likely. Um, so I'm, our, HR, our risk manager at the time, she was like, well, yeah, that makes sense. So insure him just as you do the other dogs. So he is insured in case something should happen. Um, we worked with the HR department. And even if you're with a volunteer organization, make sure that you work with your county uh, risk managers for workers' comp just to make sure all those things are figured out. Because if someone's coming in the firehouse and they don't see Max and they trip over him in the kitchen, well, now you, there's an injury, how's that covered? So just cover all those bases, his leash get caught up in someone tripping. We just wanna make sure all that was covered and that's very important to make sure that that's done. Um, School partnerships, <clears throat> I wrote a lot on these bullets because if you want the presentation, I want you to be able to read why these school um, partnerships are very important. Uh, but we wanted to directly educate our audience. And one thing we do now is we show up at our elementary school on day one and we have a fire truck that parks out front with a banner that says, welcome back students and teachers. Uh, well, I also went to Walmart and bought uh, window chalk and I wrote it on the fire chief's truck once he got parked. Uh, probably should have asked first, uh, but I did it anyway. And we wrote it on the fire trucks, welcome back. Kids love it, teachers love it. Um, and you can see the, uh, our firefighters there with two of the kids coming back to school. Um, so school collaboration is very important. One of the things that we found that um, was important was school-wide surveys. So we print on a piece of paper there, um, <coughs> That was, we actually did this survey countywide. And the reason we did that, you could take a survey, uh, scan the QR code, all the parents could, and you answer the question about how many smoke alarms are in your home, do they work, and do you have any that don't work? If they don't work, do you need someone to come in and install them in your residence? Went into um, SurveyMonkey, and whoever, there were, we have a north end of the county and the south end of the county, so we did two pizza parties. Uh, we delivered pizza to your house by a fire truck. Okay, so um, if you won the survey. But we wanted to get a glimpse, this is after we had a county death, we wanted to get a glimpse to make sure that everyone had a working smoke detector in the school. So, or in the county, and the best way to get out, you know, Ocean Elementary School has uh, 700 kids. So that's 700 families, residences hopefully that we're in, finding out they have working smoke detectors. So even if you don't want to do it countywide, you want to do it school-wide, it's just printing off the flyer and a QR code, creating your survey monkey, and having that information from your kids. Now, there has to be follow-up. If you find out someone doesn't have a working smoke detector in your district, and you're looking at it at 12 noon on a Sunday morning, they should not go to sleep in their house on Sunday night without a working smoke detector. And that came from my fire chief. He's very adamant. You can find out if someone doesn't have a working smoke detector, and the moment you know, they do not go to sleep another night in that house without one. So you have to make sure that you have that ability to do that, which through the state and the donations of smoke detectors, uh, we do. 
Um, just some of our fire prevention team. As you can see, Max is uh, well involved in that. Um, Christy's there running the budget numbers of food to make sure we went over budget. Um, all right, what we've done here, uh, this is a smaller group of children, you can tell from the others. We found that we have non-speaking English students. You know what? We teach fire prevention, and those kids sit there and have no idea what we're saying. So what we did is we uh, hired a gentleman uh, named David Marquez. He's currently in the police academy for us. Um, he comes out. We do much smaller lessons for our Spanish-speaking population children. We did this, and then Christy said, well, we also give out giveaways that are all in English to these same children. So, you know, we don't have them, you know, we didn't go and buy anything to give them. Well, Christy goes on the uh, NFPA's website, prints off the same material in Spanish, puts it in a nice packet, and then you order pencils or something that say, Span you know, Spanish words on it. We didn't order, you know, a thousand, but we ordered 500 to, you probably did order a thousand. <laughs> um, for the kids. And then we do the same thing once they escape the house. Um, for, fortunately, you can't hear, it's not too loud, but um, David's talking to them about their escape planning. You also see those easels and those boards. Christy created those in Canva, had them blown up at Staples, and we take those with us at our fire prevention event so that they're portable. So initiate contact, reach out to the schools, the guidance counselors, uh, Talk to them about why you want to have the partnership, why that's important uh, for your agency. Um, and then extending the educational offer to do it throughout the year. So we're not just in our schools during the month of October. We go for field days. Um, we go for reading. We, we go for all kinds of reasons. They just ask us to come out uh, because the kids love fire trucks. It could be uh, teacher specific. We give all of our information to the teachers. The teachers take that information. And they will call us. Um, throughout the year saying we're doing a lesson on water and I'm like okay and they're like can you spray the kids with water sure um, so we try to help them with the di different curriculums that they're doing throughout the um, year uh, utilize your NFPA uh, resources um, national um, NFPA all those different things you can get different multilingual materials but make sure that you um, take advantage of it Smoke alarm checks, this is one of the things that we do all the time. Uh, we want to make sure that no one is going to die because they did not have a working smoke detector in their home. We also encourage our members in our department, when it's change your clock, check your battery, we have them send us photos for our social media. So for your firefighters in your department, hey, send photos of you and your kids checking your smoke detectors. We're going to put it on our social media to say, hey, our family is doing this as well. So that's one of our firefighters kids. They went overboard and they printed you know, their own materials and staged the picture for us. Uh, but it was phenomenal that they did that and we got some traction on our Facebook. If we have volunteer duty crews um, and we want them to go to a certain area, I take a Google map, I screenshot it, I highlight the streets that I want them to do. Uh, they keep a log of not at home, at home, if they change the battery, um, checked it, or if they just left a flyer. So we know how many homes we visited, how many batteries we replaced, and how many detectors we checked. And the reason we're in this area here is because that's where um, our older population resides. And a lot of times they're not able to get up and check their, their smoke detectors, so we do send a team out. These homes are very nice homes, but the older population is not able to get up there and check the battery, so that's why we go out. And then for our career folks, we do the same thing. Uh, we give them a map, we give them the date that they're going to do it on um, the next day that they're in, and then I get these maps and I make sure that they're all colored in um, when we're, then next year, if we didn't finish 139th Street, we'll do it, or if the chief, after the fire, we kind of do those as well. If we have a fire, we still go out and check the detectors. So to implement that, outline the goals in your target areas. Uh, don't just send an engine out because there's folks at the firehouse and then two weeks later you do it again and then that next engine where someone wasn't on they're knocking the same doors 
So make sure that it's an organized way. You can keep a, a book in the station that says smoke alarm check, and they could just take the map out, go check, and put it back in the book so people know what they did. Um, train individuals on how to talk to folks about a smoke detector. Firefighters, there's something that happens, and they're like, you want me to, I, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like, really, you don't know what you're doing? Well, what am I supposed to tell them? I don't know about the 10 years and if they're supposed to. So before anyone goes out, we typically host a lesson on, hi, I'm Ryan with the fire department. Today, we're out encouraging folks to check the battery in their smoke detector. Do you mind if we come in and push your test button? And they're like, that's all I have to say? Yes. <laughs> then the other part of that is if they need a smoke detector installed, make sure that our folks understand that it should not be in the middle of the room, that it should not be next to the bed, that it's installed in accordance with manufacturer's instructions. The smoke detectors that we get donated through the state uh, fire marshal's office, take out one of those instruction manuals and read where they should be installed. You don't want it to be too far down the wall. You don't want to be too far off the wall on the ceiling. Make sure that you read that so that we're installing them correctly. <clears throat> All right, getting your life safety message to the community. This is for when the, am I good on time? I don't even know what time it is. Okay. Um, you obviously use social media, but what I find is that seems to be all that people care about. If someone posts something nasty on our social media about the mayor or anyone, it's like they live by it. It's like it ruins their day. So everything we do now is, is that on social media? Did you put that out? That's all people care about. But it's actually bigger than that because not everyone is on social media. We have to remember that we still have the nightly news watchers, we still have newspapers, that we should be putting our message in to our community. So leverage your social media uh, platforms and digital platforms, ensure that your message is getting out there without media coverage. But when it comes to creating your own media content, there are some things that you can do to take care of posting uh, your message and getting it on the six o'clock news. So my goal today is to take this life safety seminar that we're at and tell the Ocean City community on the Eastern Shore that members of the Ocean City Fire Department attended a life safety expo with leaders from across the state. It's a good tagline, right? WBOC and 47, our local outlets, do you think they sent someone here? No. no. So I am going to be the reporter today and get the message over to them. In order to do that, there's a small investment of some things and I'm gonna show you what to do to create that content. Once you create that content in those videos, you send it to the media with a press release and that takes them from coming in and having to film their own B-roll footage. All right, so you all sitting here, um, they come in and they're like, you know, watching you take notes, right? They're doing this and they're getting a pan of the whole room. Well, they're not here to do that. So we have to do that. So before I leave, I'm going to do that. But last night I wrote the press release for this conference. Um, well, hold on, let's go back. All right, so we're going to buy these items. Uh, I always buy a light. The reason I buy a light is because... Who's on TikTok in here and Snapchat and all that? Instagram? Instagram? Okay. Um, lighting makes everything, right? Makes you look good, different angles. So I have these portable lights. Uh, these here are $139. And then I also bought the tripod on the end there for $42. This sits on like that. And then it's battery powered, so if I don't have power somewhere, I can always hook this up. I can record myself talking to the media and I can send it to them to be posted uh, on their six o'clock, five o'clock news, whatever. And then the, you see the little microphone there. Also invest in that. And the reason why you want that microphone is you want to be able to have good audio. Good audio and good lighting makes everything. So for a small amount there, you can be your own news reporter. Now, the reason why I think that's important, and I'm gonna show you here that it works, okay? 
Uh, you feel dumb when you first do it because you have everything set up. You have your tripod, you have your camera set up on it, and I left the other part over there, but the camera will be sitting here, right? It would be up a little bit higher. But as you're talking, you're never looking directly because you know on news reports, like they're looking at this way at the reporter. So when you have it set up, you're actually looking this way and you feel really weird. But once you do it and you see that you made the news and your department made the news, you'll do this over and over again. As a matter of fact, I actually reduce the number of in-person interviews I do for the fire chief. If they want a message, tell, send me your interview questions and we'll send you the B-roll footage. We just did that the other day. They wanted to talk about our budget and overtime and you know how that was gonna go. So we pre-recorded a message and we'll send it out to them when we're ready. But what does that look like? This was me getting set up. I come back, try to get my foot. Testing one, two, three, here, here's into the fire department, testing one. Two. Checking the microphone, how does it sound? Go back, make sure it's good. Ryan Whittington, R-Y-A-N, W-H-I-T-T, I-N-G-T-O-N, president of the Ocean City Firefighters Union. Notice I pause so they can cut it. Now, I also record other videos like this, okay? Um, fire safety messages, don't leave things near the stove. I record this. I record additional B-roll footage, smoke alarm time of the year, two of our members just putting smoke detectors in a cabinet. We're engaging Max, people love it. He gets followers on Instagram. So, um, this was on our media outlet. Where, does that look familiar? I recorded it on my iPhone. And that's what they're using. They didn't have to come in, they didn't have to set up. Um, the new contract for Ocean City Firefighters. Uh, if you play this, you'll see that me standing there in my suit. Um, this is where, let me, I don't know if it's going to play, but um, they're using everything I recorded and they don't have to come out to the station anymore. You control your message, you control your narrative, and you get your message out. Because today, on a Saturday in Ocean City, on the Eastern Shore, it is very news slow. So when I get back and I send a video of this and I send a press release, it's going to be on the news tonight. All right, this is the uh, news release that I wrote last night. The title is, Ocean City Fire Department participates in statewide life safety conference in College Park, Maryland. Then I go on and I give some quote about it. It was great to be with the educators from across the state to highlight the importance of education to our various communities and ways to get the message out there. The one thing I am renewed to drive home is that smoke alarms save lives and there is no reason anyone across our state should sleep in a home without a smoke alarm. The conference provided a platform. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> the conference provided a platform for participants to exchange ideas, share best practices, and explore innovative approaches to enhancing life safety and education initiatives. And that's going to be on the news tonight, or in the newspaper, in the, uh, on Friday, um, highlighting what we all did here. So once you record all that information with your phone. The question is, how do you get it over to the media outlet? Well, there's a free website called wetransfer.com. That's how I send everything. The gentleman back there with the camera, do you use that at all? I have. Yep. Um, it doesn't distort, it doesn't compress, so you don't look all blurry or shaky when you're on TV. The other reason I do this is how many of you have been asked to do a news interview on Zoom? All right, well, Zoom, you have like three chins, the lighting doesn't look right, the angle's up here, 
So I just prefer to set everything up perfectly and make sure that our department is represented well. I have three chins. I don't know about anyone else, but I hate Zoom because you're coming up from this angle. Um, so go to wetransfer.com. You don't even have to create an account if you don't want. It's free. You can just simply hit I agree and you can send those files to the media outlet. So before we leave, she's taking a lot of notes. I'm going to make sure I record like her from a nice angle, get an overview of the room, and we're going to send it to the, uh, uh, our media team on the Eastern Shore. And you guys will all be on there. Billboards. Clear Channel, all these big media outlets, they have to give away so much free stuff in community public um, relations. They have to donate so much. So this is a billboard that is going to be on the electronic one on Route 50 in Willards, eastbound as you're heading into Ocean City. However, as I put this up here, I emailed the gentleman last night. I said, hold off on that. I need to redo it. And what I want to change here is Fire spreads quickly, not fires spread quickly. Uh, so I just want to flip that S around. Um, but this is going to be a message on electronic billboard. It's very simple, it's very big, but we want to do what we can to make sure that we're spreading the message. So within your jurisdictions, you could be a volunteer fire company, it could be a chief's association, a municipality, county government, whatever, pick up the phone, call Clear Channel and say, I need a billboard to educate the public on smoke detectors. And they'll give you the space. Uh, Max actually had a billboard when he first came on Route 50, the same one. They uh, donated that as well. Any questions? Yes. As far as that long at the firehouse? Well, like the, the things you teach the kids so the kids that all talk and things like that because I love that stuff. <laughs> so the public safety expo is for all ages, but what we do is we have Ocean City University. And it's where you can spend one night at the firehouse and you hear from myself or the fire chief and we talk about what we do. We'll put you we used to put you in turnout gear, we don't anymore. Uh, but we will do different things and walk you through scenarios have you climb the stairs with our medical bags, have you do CPR, we get you for one evening for three hours. Then the next night, you go to the Ocean City Police Station and do the same thing. And that's called Ocean City University. I think it's eight weeks long. They also end up with our um, public works department, our finance department, so they're getting a glimpse of what we do citywide. Yes, sir. I said, will I or do I? Can you? Will yes, we can. Uh, we're actually uh, going to Pittsburgh next week. They want to talk about the therapy dog program. They're getting some pushback from their command staff. Uh, so we're going to really work with them on what Max can offer. Again, not just in mental health and wellness, but also um, fire prevention and education. So yes. Yep, absolutely. Yes, sir. Data. What's your question? Uh, it, so at the end here, I did put her contact info, uh, that last email at the bottom. So if you want to know like what our fire camp cost us, um, she has all that in Excel spreadsheets. If you want to know how many kids came through on year one, two, three, and if they're in year four, um, she has all that populated in Excel spreadsheets that we don't mind sharing, including lunches, all that. We used to have a lot of donations come in for lunch. Um, <clears throat> but now we actually had the kids pack their lunch. Because now we're running into gluten-free allergies, peanut allergies. One kid was giving another kid a, well, Chrissy forgot to take them out of the freezer. They were frozen. Remember that time you did that? The, what are they called? The peanut butter jelly? Uncrustables, they were still frozen. Poor kids. <laughs> but she only did that once for data collection. Mm -hmm. And one of our members, who's their assistant chief, has uh, the fire dogs, and we will bring them down to our community days okay. or any other special events that yep. we ask them to. 
Yep, absolutely. That's a good way. Utilize that resource that you have. Yes. Do I have, what time is it? Okay, I'll have him, and as soon as questions are done, I'll have him, yes. What does your department do for those who are allergic to dogs? Or so, no, nope, remember I mentioned, um, are you allergic to dogs before I get Max up here? Okay. Um, so that's a good question. I said talk with HR about, or um, your command staff, your chiefs and whatnot, about allergies. So before Max even came along, we sent out a department-wide survey and said, if there's a dog in the firehouse, will you work with the dog? Will you conduct a duty crew with the dog? Are you allergic to dogs? And we ask everyone. No one said no, because you had to put your name on it, okay? Uh, because if you have an allergy or don't wanna work with a dog, we need to know who you are. We don't allow you to hide behind fake surveys. That's, that's a no-go. about those who didn't think they had allergies to dogs? So if something yeah. develops, the, the chain of command is that they report it to their lieutenant battalion chief. They come to me, hey, Max, you know, can't be around this person because they're allergic or whatever. Uh, Max, we have an office at our headquarters on 15th Street. So worst case is he could stay in my office if you know, they're working and don't want him there. But we have very strict rules. Um, he's not allowed in the bunk rooms. Um, you know, there are certain areas that he's not allowed to go to make sure that those areas stay clean for people who don't want dogs near, near them. And of course, with Max comes some dog hair, um, but now everyone loves him, so it's not a big deal to <laughs> run a little swifter around and clean it up. Yes, sir. What was your time frame? You used the time frame on getting the dog, but what was your time frame from uh, presenting this and then through your chain of command, through your chief and all, how long was that through this whole process? My chief said, uh, I want a business plan. I'm like, all right, I'll figure this out. Uh, so I went home and Googled business plan for therapy dog programs. <laughs> Copy, paste, right? So I'll give you mine. Uh, and then the next command staff meeting a week later, I took it and I presented it to the command staff. And he said, okay, I'm good with it. And I, next steps were city manager. And he said, let's go there now. So we went there and it was, uh, our chief, he doesn't like, um, he's very like, oh, you said we're gonna do this? Let's do it. It's, sometimes it can be a bit much, right? Oh, public safety expo. like. I bring it up, hey, let's do a public safety expo next summer. Well, no, let's do it this summer. Okay, we will. Um, so things with him move pretty quickly. Um, and a lot, I will tell you, our risk manager, she was probably my biggest hang up, okay? So I called uh, the state FM's office, um, Mike, and I said, um, we need Sandy to come down, Hero Dog Sandy to come down and give a demo to our risk manager. And he said, sure, so she comes in, and um, Sandy sits at her feet. Sa she's seeing what Sandy can do. And before he left, she said, okay, this is way different than I thought. I thought it was gonna be a little jumpy puppy running around, you know, wrapping my feet up in the leash and tripping me and making me fall. Um, so she was kind of our biggest hang up. And then she wanted some contracts and some agreements and things like that. Uh, but then our city manager stepped in and said, it's just like our police canines. It's a fire department. Let's ensure it as such. Um, so, Three, six months, it was pretty quick. So Hero Dog Sandy is named after Sandra Cohen, who uh, tragically died in the line of duty for the FM's office. Yep. Sandy was born the day he had his incident. So mm. that's why there's such a close tie. And, yeah. And we're happy to have both dogs in the state. Yep. Anything else? Max, at ease. I have a yes. kind of off uh, question. Here. You said Max Swagger earlier. Really. Yes. Do you have like, like a set, just set. one general, or do you do like different ones so it can be switched up with events? So Max has uh, set swag, and Chrissy's going to grab some. We brought enough for to give everyone. Um, so if Chrissy wants to start, uh, we have uh, his poker chips that we give out. One side has his picture. The other side has the fire department logo and says, check your smoke alarm. Why do we do that? The reason we did that is I have a fire prevention budget and I can classify that as fire prevention because it has check your smoke detector. So I got over on the city manager on that one. Um, so these are the different items that we give out. Yes, sir. Um, when you mentioned before about the partnerships, okay. how do you manage the whole, your county, 
government leaders that, I'll be honest, could care less whether you're volunteer or not. Um, I don't know. How do we include them? So I also have a volunteer uh, in Parsonsburg, Maryland, and Wicomico County. Um, we include them on all of our press releases that we send out. Um, we invite them to events. If they don't show up to events, um, we will actually go to them. Okay, so um, we don't give them an option to not be involved with us. It's being in front of them. You need me to repeat that? She's yeah, we don't give them an option. We keep them, uh, we send them press releases. Uh, we text them any major incidents and things like that. We include them in text messages. So there's a constant communication with them about what we're doing in the community. If they don't respond to the text, they still get the next major event. We make sure we include them in it. Okay. Yep. How many years of service before you retire? Max, good question. Um, there's a eight year old lab. Um, that they have named, uh, starts with a G, can't think of it. Um, and he is probably, he's eight years old, right? And you gotta remember these dogs aren't sniffing chemicals, they're not chasing after bad guys. Um, so we're probably thinking that we could keep him till eight years old. What we don't wanna happen is when Max retires or not be something to backfill. Uh, because we just completed one year of Max um, in our department. And to your question, what we're doing is we're actually sending a year in report to our entire mayor and council about what Max has completed. And so we're hoping that we can keep Max for at least eight years. We're going to give a one year review of us having him, what he's done, what he's accomplished. And as Max is, it's time for him to retire through his, that therapy dog fund, we hope to be able to bring in another dog so that there's no lag there. <laughs> Dogs what? <laughs> yeah, we'll see you there. We'll see you there. Any other questions? Chrissy, can I borrow your chair? Um, so I'm just going to show you a quick couple skills for Max. Uh, obviously, you know that some people can be, um, you know, scared of dogs, or we get folks at the elementary school who are in wheelchairs or. We visit the nursing home during the holidays. Uh, folks are sitting in, in wheelchairs and things. So uh, if they're nervous or anything like that, I can always tell Max, Max, at ease. And then I could tell Max to visit. And he just rests his head very softly where he is. Now, right now I'm giving him treats because I want him to know that these positive things that he keeps doing when I ask him to do them, it's a good thing. And notice he's repeating it without me even asking him because I did it. And um, <laughs> He knows that he's going to get some treats, so he's, he's, he's learned that from the firehouse, I think. Um, so when I go to meetings, I can always um, have a seat, and I can tell Max, Max, settle. And he'll stay at my feet and not get up. And he'll stay there the whole time. But the concern, the, not concerning thing, but the thing that happens is I want him to stay here, but if someone raises their voice, gets upset, he's going over to them. Um, so Max, at ease. Um, when I go to a conference or something, and I want him to go under a table, under, and he'll stay there until I give him his command, Max at ease, and he'll come over to me. Max, take a bow. Yes, good boy. Um, Max can also, I, don't, I didn't bring my keys with me, but he can pick things up, bring them to me. Uh, in the mornings when I'm getting ready for work, he'll bring me my shoes. That's part of his service dog work. He does like to take laundry out of the dryer and put it in the basket, but then my, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> but on rainy days, uh, he does have his own basket with like some towels and things that he'll move back and forth. It's just that work that he likes to do. Um, he can also open elevators. Uh, I could tell, uh, wait, Max touch. Okay, good boy. Um, Max, say hi. So if people are nervous, and I just say, put your hand out. Max, say hi. And he'll just say hi to you like that. Max, sit. No, sit. <laughs> wave, wave. Good boy. Um, if I want him to do something, 
and I'm going to give him another command, but I want him to, Max, wait. Max, fire, stop, drop, roll. Good boy. Good boy. Let's hear a round of applause. Take a bow. Take a bow. Good boy. Good boy. Uh, so he has about 26 different skills. Um, sometimes when we go visit folks in their home um, that within our community that might be going through something, had the death of a, a death of a loved one, they want to invite the firefighters back to thank them for all they did. If you know we've we've gone there month after month, and there's like tiny hallways or you know cluttered things, and I have to walk through. A small you know I can give Max a command to follow or for him to go through and he'll know that once he gets to a certain area he's supposed to stop um, but he has a total of about 26 skills um, yeah and he does love the state FM dogs they get to hang out and they play when he's in this vest he's not allowed to play with any other dogs um, so that way if someone in this room had a service dog or another therapy dog he doesn't think it's playtime he knows like all right that dog's over there I can't I can't do anything um, but yeah, Hero Dogs in Montgomery County, uh, very, very phenomenal program. I uh, can't talk enough about it. Anything I'm missing on Max that you can think of? I um, think that's about it. Any other questions? Awesome. Thank you all very much for having us. We appreciate it. Max, take a bow. Good boy, good boy. So, um, Christy, I'm going to give you this. I have something to operate for you. Did everyone get their Max chip and baseball card? Yeah. 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 Ryan, this is just a little thank you. Oh, absolutely. Thank and uh, you. great great having you guys Appreciate here. That. And this is for you. I don't know if you got one yet. Max, I'll see you next uh, Sunday, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to take a short break real quick. We have a 15.